Just before we get started, I want to quickly mention that one of our former amazing authors who wrote many of the most popular videos on this channel then went on to host his own channel, Fact Fiend, Carl Smallwood, is hosting an online Mortal Kombat tournament on the 13th of April. It's free to enter and the prize pool is already close to $2,000. So look, if you're interested in entering free for a chance to win some sweet, sweet gaming money by kicking ass in Mortal Kombat, go check it out. There's a link below. Look, honestly, I don't even know what Mortal Kombat is. Though for some reason, combat is spelt with a K, but what I do know is that it's hosted by Carl, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Go check it out, there's a link below, and now today's video. Bah, vanilla ice cream. Despite being a byword for dull and bland, vanilla remains one of the world's favourite ice cream flavours, making up a full 28% of the $79 billion global market. Vanilla is distinctive and flavourful on its own, but is subtle enough to not interfere with other flavourings, making it the perfect base for an endless variety of fillings and toppings, from chocolate sauce, peanuts and sprinkles, to chocolate chips, cookie dough, and if you're a psychopath, raisins. Vanilla ice cream is so ubiquitous that very few of us stop to think about what goes into making this popular treat. For the vast majority of brands, the flavour comes either from natural vanilla extract derived from actual vanilla beans, or vanilla in a synthetic flavouring made from wood pulp. But if you've ever had the pleasure of trying truly high-end artisanal vanilla ice cream, there's a small chance that you may have ingested an altogether unexpected ingredient, a flavouring derived from, wait for it, the anal secretions of beavers. This is the story of castorium, one of the world's strangest food additives. Castorium is a dark brown sticky substance exuded by the castor glands, a pair of small elongated sacs near the base of the tail in mature beavers. Beavers, who are highly territorial but possess poor hearing and eyesight, use castorium to scent mark the borders of their territory as well as to waterproof their fur. Despite being located close by, the castor glands are distinct from a beaver's anal glands, though due to this proximity, exuded castorium will often contain traces of anal gland secretions and urine. While the scents used by most mammals for marking territory are distinctly unpleasant, the beaver is a rare exception, with the scent of castorium being variously described as resembling birch tar, old leather, or vanilla. Consequently, for centuries, castorium has been highly sought after as a flavoring for food and a fixative or enhancer for perfume and incense. The indigenous Algonquin people of northeast and North America add castorium to tobacco. The substance was an ingredient in an ancient Roman elixir called the Caesar antidote used to calm menstrual cramps and induce abortions, and in his 1612 essay of French English philosopher Francis Bacon recommended castorium as a tonic for enhancing memory and mental focus. The secretion has also long been prescribed as a remedy for aches, pains, and fever, which makes sense as one of its main ingredients, salicin, is metabolized by the body into salicylic acid, aka aspirin. Demand for castorium, as well as beaver pelts and meat, led to the European beaver being hunted to near extinction by the 16th century. Amusingly, much of this overharvesting was driven by a creative loophole to the Roman Catholic doctrine against eating red meat on Fridays. Using the old Aristotelian classification for animals, meat-loving Catholics in the Middle Ages defined beavers and other water-dwelling mammals like otters as fish and thus were acceptable to eat on Fridays. To which we can say, sure guys, okay. The market for castorium expanded significantly as Europeans began to colonize the new world and the new fashion for beaver felt hats drove the establishment of the North American fur trade. Castorium was produced as a byproduct of fur trapping with the castor sacs being removed from dead beavers with a knife and smoked over a fire to preserve and age them. Traditionally, some of this castorium was then used to bait the traps and attract more beavers. It's also around this time that castorium began to be widely used in the perfect industry. As well as adding its own complex leathery vanilla notes, castorium also serves as a fixative, a heavy molecule to which other scent molecules bind, slowing their evaporation and helping the scent last longer. Another animal secretion long used for this purpose, as well as as a food flavoring, is ambergris produced in the intestines of sperm whales. And for more on this strange but surprisingly valuable substance, please check out our previous video, Trading Fecal Matter for Gold. In the early 20th century, castorium began appearing in a greater variety of consumer products, from cigarettes to puddings, gelatin desserts, beverages, and yeah, ice cream. However, contrary to popular belief, the substance was never used as a one-to-one -one substitute for regular flavorings like vanilla bean. Rather, very small amounts were used to enhance the flavor profile of vanilla, strawberry, and raspberry. Indeed, castorium is so potent that nine grams of it is enough to flavor one billion cigarettes. But what about today? Is the tub of ice cream that you binge eat following a breakup actually flavored with beaver anal goo? At first glance, it's nearly impossible to tell as the US Food and Drug Administration has classified castorium as a generally recognized safe or GRAS food 
Additive, meaning food manufacturers, are only required to list it under the umbrella term natural flavoring. But before you start gagging and throwing every vanilla flavored item in the pantry into the garbage, rest assured that the answer to this question is almost certainly no. While castorium was widely used when beaver trapping was a major industry, once beaver populations began to dwindle and the fur trade collapsed, supplies dried up and castorium flavoring disappeared from store shelves. Given the protected status of beavers, collecting castorium today involves trapping and anesthetizing live beavers and then milking the molasses-like fluid from the castor glands, a process that is slow, laborious, and, by most accounts, disgusting. This makes castorium rare and expensive, limiting its use to exclusive high-end food and perfume brands. Indeed, worldwide, only about 136 kilograms of castorium are consumed annually, compared to about 1.2 million kilos of vanillin flavoring. Another reason for the decline in castorium's popularity is surprisingly Jewish kashrut dietary laws. In order to be certified kosher, substances falling under the natural flavoring umbrella cannot be derived from animal products, precluding the use of castorium in most mass market food products. So then, what are those 136 kilograms used for? As with its even rarer and more expensive cousin ambergris, the majority of castorium is used in the perfume industry, where it lends its leathery notes and fixative properties to scents such as Chanel's Anateus, Queer de Russie, and and Maggie Noir, Lacombe's Cacatory, and Guerlain's Chalamar. Small amounts are also used to flavor speciality spirits, such as Swedish Bavahot or Beaver Shout, a type of schnapps traditionally consumed prior to embarking on a beaver hunt. The New Hampshire-based distillery House of Tamworth also uses castorium to flavor its signature Eau de Musk bourbon whiskey. Castorium is also rumored to be the secret ingredient in Blue Moon Ice Cream, a classic Midwestern flavor whose recipe has been a closely guarded secret for nearly a hundred years, though this theory has never been conclusively proven. So, in conclusion, you can relax unless you're a fan of specialty craft spirits or obscure Midwestern ice cream, as was no doubt painfully obvious for you in high school and college, odds are you never have and never will eat beaver.